In this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the HDMIP encoder that's available from our website. So the HDMIP encoder ships with a default IP address of 192.168.1.168 with a username and password of admin. So in order to access the HDMIP encoder, I can use any browser, but for this video I'm going to use Internet Explorer, because Internet Explorer is going to allow me to access my NVR easily. So here I'm just going to type that IP address for the encoder in, 192.168.1.168. I'm going to hit the Enter key. Internet Explorer is going to prompt me to log into the device. Again, the username and password are both all admin, in all lowercase. As you can see here, I've logged in to the HDMI IP encoder. If I go to the System tab here, I can see there are network settings. This will allow me to change the IP address on the HDMIP encoder. Keep in mind, if your network is not a standard 192.168.1 network, you may have to change the network port on your computer to first initially access the HDMIP encoder and then change its IP address to your network scheme. For example, Comcast Business likes to use a 10.10.1 IP address scheme then you would of course assign your HDMIP encoder an IP address on this scheme. For the sake of simplicity, I'll just use 168 as an example. You would then come down here to the gateway and change that from this to a 10.10.1.1 IP address. That should likely be the IP address for your router. This is an advanced way to change the IP address on the encoder. If you have any questions, feel free to contact our team via email and we'll try our best to get you a video on how to change IP address of equipment over different networks. But for the sake of this video, we'll continue with the basic overview of the HDMIP encoder. Down here we can see there are NTP settings. These will allow your encoder to reach out to the internet to get the current time. We'll enable that and then you want to set your time zone. We happen to be on the East Coast, which is UTC minus 5. Central time is UTC minus 6, Mountain time is UTC minus 7, and Pacific time is UTC minus 8. Alright, so I set my NTP setting to enable, I set my time zone to the Eastern Standard Time, and then also I made sure to change my IP address back up here to the regular setting that I had it on because I am on a standard network. I can come down here and click the apply button. It's going to prompt me, it says set successfully, please restart your device. So in order to restart my device without walking up to it and unpowering it and powering it back on, I can click the reboot button under the system tab. For the sake of this video though, I'm just going to continue covering the different settings available on the HDMI encoder. So I can go to the OSD setting. This is the on-screen display setting. This would allow me to overlay something on the HDMI encoder's output on the network. The second tab here is the encoder settings. There are some important settings that you may need to enable here if they're not enabled by default. Here is the RTSP URL setting for the mainstream. You will want to make sure this is enabled. Looks like it was enabled by default. There's a few other tabs here that will allow you to modify some of the settings on the encoder. However, we recommend leaving them as default unless you know what you're doing in these settings. At the top, I can go back to the status tab. This was the home page that the encoder took me to. If I wanted to sync the time to my device, my current PC, I could click this button here. It will set the time to the computer time. So you can see it's 144, and it set it to 144. There's some other different settings you can see here. You can also tell if your RTMP or RTSP URLs are disabled by coming to this page. If it did not have an RTSP URL listed here, then it would say disable. Keep in mind, you can also use VLC Media Player to see what the encoder is actually capturing. I would either highlight this, right click and click copy, or I would just type in RTSP colon forward slash forward slash the IP address into VLC Media Player. I will show you an example. So I'd come down to my Windows button here, type VLC Media Player. It's available from many software distributors on the internet. I'm going to open the program. 
click the media button at the top left, click open network stream. As you can see, I've already accessed my encoder before, but like I mentioned, you can come back here to Internet Explorer, highlight this, right click, copy the RTSP URL, and then right click and paste it. And then click the play button. It should access your HDMI IP encoder. As you can see, I have the HDMI IP output from my NVR connected to my encoder, and I'm able to view my NVR using VLC Media Player over my network. I'm going to close out of VLC Media Player and open Internet Explorer again. I'm going to open a new tab in Internet Explorer and show how you can add these HDMI IP encoders to an NVR. Regardless of what HDMI input you have in the encoder, you can actually record this to one of CCTV Camera World's NVRs. So I'm going to log into my NVR. If you have the factory default IP address, it would be 192.168.1.108. Going to log into my NVR using the factory default username and password. And then I can go up to the setup tab. It should automatically take you to the camera registration page. If it does not, you will first want to expand the image tab and then click the registration page. When you get to the preview page and you first initially log in, you may be prompted to install the plugin. We recommend installing the plugin for Internet Explorer. Inside of this registration screen, I can do a device search. It will search my network for any devices that can be added to my NVR. As you can see here, it was able to rapidly pull up the encoder. It named it X encoder, and then you can see the protocol is on Vive. I could double click to add the HDMI IP encoder to my NVR. And then after some time, this red status should turn from a red X to a green check mark. Sometimes you may have to come down here to the refresh button. As you can see, after clicking the refresh button, it turned into a green check mark. And this means that the HDMI IP encoder is actually recording and is viewable from my NVR. In order to confirm that, I'm going to first go to the preview screen on my NVR and then click the first channel where I've added the HDMI IP encoder to. As you can see, since I have the HDMI IP encoder pulling the video data from my NVR and then I've added it to my NVR, it creates kind of this repetition here. Of course, in a normal scenario, you would be using another NVR or another device that has HDMI output in order to record it to your NVR. Hopefully this video gives you a decent overview of what the HDMI IP encoder can do and how you can access its stream or add it to an NVR. Thank you for watching.